welcome everyone dr navin here from upsc medico uh, when you look at uh, upsc medical science optional we have hypertension in pharmacology and also hypertension is also part of obg that is gestational hypertension or preeclampsia and i could see many of the aspirants mainly in the test series they are struggling to give the exact definitions and they are getting confused about what is preeclampsia eclampsia what is severe eclampsia what is superimposed preeclampsia so there are questions in this line and also when you write answers for management of hypertension or hypertension emergency you need to know the latest definitions of hypertension given by american heart association so the reference is taken from american heart association and american college of obstetrics and gynecology they give latest definitions in this particular segment now we will come back to the definition of hypertension then we'll go to uh, the various definitions used in preeclampsia which are up to date now normal bp is less than 120 systolic and less than 80 diastolic i have given number but that is the units are mmhg here now this and and or are very important that i would like to see in your answers when you talk about normal bp 120 by 80 it should be less than 120 and it should be less than 80 even if it is 120 even if it is a uh, like 120 by let's say 78 it is elevated so the number should be 119 okay the normal one is less than 120 you have to be very careful whether it is less than 120 or less than or equal to 120 this this subtle variation is very important now when we say elevated bp elevated bp is not an emergency or it doesn't require any treatment just the bp is elevated maybe any sympathetic cause or stress related one or um, running whatever it is so the bp what elevated so elevated bp is 120 mm hg to 129 mm hg systolic will not call Let's see the diastolic bp is no way related to the elevated part the diastolic normal bp is 79 or less if it is 80 to 89 any elevation of diastolic any elevation in diastolic bp is a worry something systolic bp can be elevated due to multiple physiological causes but any elevation in diastolic bp is a worry some cause so that's the reason in diastolic bp if it is 80 to 89 or or that means if the bp is 131 by 78 still it is hypertension if the bp is 119 by 81 still it is hypertension because the value or is very important hope you're getting my point but previously i could see lot of students writing answers from old literature saying that jnc 7 or 6 guidelines more than or equal to 140 or 90 is hypertension but the definition has been changed now it is more than or equal to 130 or 80 now we call this as stage 1 hypertension but only difference is you don't treat with pharmacotherapy unless the patient is having any comorbidities that means this condition does not require pharmacotherapy unless there are complications now the same old definition requires pharmacotherapy irrespective of comorbidities and it is more than or equal to 140 or more than equal to 90 that is stage 2 hypertension these are the latest definitions i would like to see in your answers right now the first part of regular definitions are of hypertension is done now what is this hypertensive crisis there are three terms which are commonly used in literature medical literature we start with hypertensive urgency we have hypertensive emergency and there is one term which is commonly used mainly in pathology which defines the fibrinoid necrosis which is seen in kidney biopsy this is malignant hypertension or malignant hypertensive arteriosclerosis or highly in arteriosclerosis seen in the kidney in cases of high bp so what are these three things they all come under single umbrella now we call them as hypertensive crisis so how to understand this hypertensive crisis let's say hypertensive crisis 
so for us let's say normal hypertension is more than 130 by 80 right more than or equal to 130 by 80 severe severe hypertension some of the times most of the literature they mention it is more than or equal to 160 by 110 very severe hypertension they require it as 180 by 120 but now this severe and very severe we are not using in the literature for multiple reasons because 180 by 120 can be a very severe bp for a normotensive patient for but for chronic hypertensive cases with antihypertensive therapy for almost more than 10 years this patient might not be having much difficulties or severity with this bp so the severity bp cutoff is slowly losing its importance in the literature so to call it as a hypertensive crisis now we focus mainly on acute elevation okay acute acute elevation sudden elevation so the bp is 110 but suddenly the bp now it is 140 or 150 or 160 whatever it is but this has happened in an acute fashion so the acute rise in bp this term is more important rather than the cutoff number or a value you can still use the older values but they are no more relevant in the modern literature any acute elevation in the BP is hypertensive. So this acute elevation, if it is associated with organ damage, so the organs which can be damaged are, can be kidney, so we need to do urine analysis, can be heart, we need to check for cardiac biomarkers and cardiac enzymes and also ECG, right? It can be brain, the patient might develop stroke, hemorrhagic or ischemic stroke, right? We have to do CTA, right? It can be iota the patient might land up into aortic dissection you might need to do ct angiography in these cases it can be vision also even eye gets affected you have to do check for papillary edema so organ damage if it is associated hypertensive crisis acute elevation in bp if it is associated with organ damage if it is associated with organ damage then we call it as hypertensive emergency then we call it as hypertensive emergency if there is no organ damage that means just an acute elevation of bp most of the times it is because the patient might not have taken medication or the patient might fall ill or sick or stressful situation in that uh, if it is non-compliant with the drug or drug has developed resistance he might require titration of the dose in those cases you will only see acute elevation of bp nothing else so in these cases no organ damage we can treat patient oral medication you can double the dose of the drug which he is already taking or you can add new drug. So it comes into case of resistant hypertension and you have to manage it accordingly. But if there is organ damage then you are worried. This organ damage plus poor prognosis. If you don't treat this patient the patient will die within less than 24 hours and also multiple complications in the patient already the patient had two attacks of stroke or one attack of uh, cardiac thing and uh, oncology patient whatever it is multiple complications are there then in those areas the same hypertensive emergency we call it as malignant hypertension and this patient requires immediate reduction on bp within hours within hours you have to reduce the bp that's not the case with hypertensive emergency hypertensive emergency you cannot reduce bp immediately because there is a risk of hypotension and ischemic damage we have to do it slowly we have to titrate the dose but in malignant hypertension you have to quickly reduce the dose so these are the definitions so we're talking about definitions of hypertension and we're done with normal bp elevated bp stage one and stage two hypertension and hypertensive crisis emergency urgency and malignant hypertension let's come back to pregnancy induced hypertension so now we are not using this term pregnancy induced hypertension we now call it as gestational hypertension this is gestational hypertension so when i say gestational hypertension please focus this condition gestational hypertension it is not seen in a chronic hypertensive case in a normal pregnant woman if she is less than 20 weeks if this she is less than 20 weeks still the criteria is 130 by 90 only 130 by 80 only but if you want to call it as a gestational hypertension it should develop after 20 weeks of pregnancy and it should subside less than 12 weeks of pregnancy less than 12 weeks of postpartum so this is 
if you want to diagnose gestational hypertension it is always and always retrospective diagnosis you can only call it as gestational hypertension you have to wait till 12 weeks postpartum after 12 weeks of delivery you have to check for the bp and see it, whether it is getting normalized or not so that parameter that value is not 130 90 for gestational hypertension like usual chronic hypertension it is 140 by 90 okay and this case is usually unless they are mild to moderate do not uh, they are mild to moderate cases do not require pharmacotherapy but we call it as severe pah if the value is more than 160 by 110 and this requires pharmacotherapy so any if you see a gestational hypertension case she presented with 141 by 80 you don't give antihypertensives to this pregnant woman unless the very severe unless the bp is very severe with end organ damage you will not resort to pharmacotherapy in these cases so this is gestational hypertension so there's lot of confusion with regards to the gestational hypertension and what is preeclampsia right now let's say let's take a clinical scenario a 23 year old primary gravida presented to obstetric clinic at the 21 weeks gestation time 21 week gestation okay it is 21 weeks gestation now you check for check for bp you are checking for bp now when you check for bp 21 weeks of gestation the bp is seen as 141 by 83 let's say okay it's so 141 by 83 now parallelly you send urine analysis urine for protein okay urine for protein proteins are absent that is protein urea is negative protein urea is negative now you are thinking in lines of gestational hypertension you take history there is no history of hypertension before this so she is actually a normotensive patient she is a normotensive pregnant woman you might have taken bp at 12 weeks and it is normal now it is 141 by 83 with negative protein urea you have to follow this patient till 12 weeks of gestation 12 weeks of gestation you have to follow this patient and if the bp normalizes if bp becomes normal then she is a classic case of gestational hypertension she is a classic case otherwise presumed case this is a classic case of gestational hypertension when you follow the patient till 12 weeks of gestation but bp still is high after 12 weeks then maybe maybe she is a case of chronic hypertension suddenly during the early pregnancy you know the cardiovascular changes during pregnancy they mask high bp because bp actually decreases during pregnancy bp is actually low during pregnancy so she may be a patient of chronic hypertension she may be a case of chronic hypertension but we were unable to diagnose it before or the pregnancy might have masked it but now we could see that the patient has developed hypertension so this is first thing but in the same scenario if this equation changes if protein urea is present or 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 you don't need protein urea criteria for sure because in american college of obstetrics in 2019 there is a major change in 2013 guidelines protein urea is a mandatory protein urea is a mandatory criteria but now we do not have a protein urea if there is signs of end organ damage you don't need to always see protein urea even if there is no protein urea if there are signs of end organ damage you still call this condition as you still call this condition as preeclampsia okay you still call this condition as preeclampsia so what i'm talking so for me to diagnose preeclampsia to diagnose preeclampsia the criteria the patient should be normotensive hypertension should start only after 20 weeks of gestation only after 20 weeks of gestation and the patient should have either protein urea either protein urea or end organ damage and organ damage eod it's a non standard abbreviation but just to save time i'm putting it now what is this protein urea so the protein urea to call it as a protein urea if you take 24 hour urine sample 
it should contain more than or equal to 300 micrograms of protein or if you are doing 24 hour urine sample or if you are only taking protein to creatine ratio that is protein to creatine PCR protein to creatine ratio it should be more than 30 mg per millimoles or if you are only doing dipstick test dipstick test the protein should be more than or equal to 2 plus on dipstick test so this is actually the criteria some books they say plus 3 actually plus 3 is nephrotic range so don't worry if it is more than or equal to plus 2 then you are talking in the lines of protein urea on a dipstick test these are spot tests protein to creatine ratio spot test and this takes 24 hour of urine sample so this is protein urea criteria but if there are significant end organ damage sig we'll ca not call it as end organ damage let's say the appropriate term is significant end organ dysfunction significant end organ dysfunction this should be the ideal term so what is that criteria to call it as significant the first thing most of the times which we see is thrombocytopenia thrombocytopenia that is platelet count less than 1 lakh okay per microliter okay platelets count below this okay any of the following like one should be present any of the following or serum creatine value less than not less than it is actually kidney damage right more than 1.1 milligram per deciliter if you do a spot serum creatine value it should be more than 1.1 thing or or if the value was 0.4 before even if it doubles up now if you have an old report and now after pregnancy if it is becoming 0.8 it shouldn't always be an abnormal value or doubling up doubling up of serum creatine value see this doubling up also signifies the importance because in our biochemistry of upsc medical science there was a question saying what are the limitations of serum creatine in estimation of kidney failure because serum creatine is less sensitive you need kidney damage of more than 50 percent so that serum creatine value rises so doubling up of serum creatine base value or a spot value of more than 1.1 mg per deciliter or if you want to look at liver fun liver dysfunction the alanine transaminase and aspartate transaminase values will be there right there will be elevation like twice the normal concentration this also is one criteria and if you see pulmonary edema on chest x-ray or patient complaints of breathlessness or if the patient is complaining of headache okay or visual symptoms they all they all they all if one of the criteria is present if one of cerebral or visual symptoms are present then we call it as preeclampsia so what is the definition of preeclampsia it is similar to gestational hypertension but more importantly patient will have either protein urea or significant end organ dysfunction symptoms or signs like platelet count low serum creatine high liver transaminase is elevated chest x-ray depicting uh, pulmonary edema and cerebral or visual symptoms will be seen so this is this is preeclampsia now the same preeclampsia instead of developing a normal tensive patient the patient is already a case of chronic hypertension this patient is already a case of chronic hypertension now this chronic hypertensive case after 20 weeks of gestation suddenly either started having proteinuria or either started having significant end organ dysfunction so then we call it as pre sorry super imposed preeclampsia okay little confusing but what is superimposed preeclampsia everything is same but instead of normal tensor the patient is already a diagnosed case of hypertension that means you will see preeclampsia symptoms less than 20 weeks of gestation that you can say this patient is having preeclampsia very early in the course of pregnancy you don't have to wait for more than 20 weeks very early in the course of pregnancy the patient is developing preeclampsia and also in comparison to a normal tensive preeclampsia patient, this superimposed preeclampsia patients, the severity is more. They have severe manifestations and prognosis is comparably poor. Prognosis is poor. So what is the clinical implications of superimposed preeclampsia in a chronic hypertension patient? In comparison to a normal tensive preeclampsia patient, these patients will have severe symptoms, 
early onset of hypertension and poor prognosis okay so that is superimposed preeclampsia now do we have any other definitions to cover yes what is severe preeclampsia and what is finally what is eclampsia what is severe preeclampsia or what is eclampsia you know we are not calling it as severe preeclampsia now now we are calling it as preeclampsia with severe features preeclampsia with severe features and we have a cut off of bp for this very careful that is more than or equal to 160 by more than or equal to 90 it is or very important okay and it should be at least two occasions two occasions with four hours apart and the patient is not on hypertensive therapy patient is not taking any hypertensive therapy okay so this is the cut off so very high bp that is preeclampsia with severe patients is hypertension is very severe plus one more criteria is there should be signs of there should be signs of significant end organ dysfunction okay there should be signs of significant end organ dysfunction if they are already present we already spoke about pulmonary edema trans thrombocytopenia new onset cerebral or visual disturbances elevated serum creatinine elevated transaminase everything the only thing which changes here is the bp is now very high and you have to check it twice and you have to see whether the patient is not on hypertensive therapy and then you are like there should be some issues because patients with hypertension therapy they show some fluctuations in the bp which can be controlled with titration but this patient is not on hypertension but on both the times there is elevation so suddenly you are thinking in the lines of severe pre preeclampsia this severe preeclampsia cases can can manifest into eclampsia so then what is this eclampsia eclampsia is there is tonic clonic seizure so development of tonic clonic seizure in patient with preeclampsia we call it as eclampsia but there should be no history of neurological disorders because if the patient is already an epileptic patient we will not call it as eclampsia because the the patient is prone for development of seizures because of something else some space occupying lesion some abscess okay something which is actually causing seizure some electrolyte abnormalities they all should be ruled out then if the seizure is because of hypertension then we call it as a uh, eclampsia no neurological no neurological condition okay so this is the criteria for eclampsia so this will conclude our discussion on important topic that is definitions related to hypertension